Northfield owes its existence to a set of rapids on the Cannon River and to John Wesley North, the city's founder. North came to Minnesota from upstate New York in 1849 and settled around the falls of St. Anthony on the Mississippi River. The St. Anthony Falls area is now downtown Minneapolis. Within five years, North became a successful lawyer and land speculator. He left the fledgling settlement of Minneapolis to search for a place to establish a new community committed to education, religion, temperance, and the abolition of slavery. A friend of his, William Marshall, had surveyed lands west of the Mississippi River and south of Minneapolis that had been ceded by the Dakota Indians in 1851. One of the sites he recommended to North for development was this spot on the Cannon River. 160 years ago, America was an agricultural society. Wheat was the main grain, and the first buildings in a new town were built of wood. North understood that a successful community needed many things, but the most critical was water power. With that, wheat could be ground into flour and logs could be cut into boards. The rapids on the cannon were well suited for both purposes. The area was also at the edge of the big woods and the prairie. The woods offered an ample supply of oak, maple and other wood to build the homes and businesses. The fertile prairie was rock-free and made ideal farmland for wheat, hay, and other crops. It was an ideal setting for the new community North wanted to establish. In August 1855, North purchased 160 acres on the Cannon River, and Northfield was founded. Within a year, North had laid out its streets, completed the first dam on the Cannon, and erected two sawmills. A flour mill at the edge of Bridge Square soon would follow. North was also building a hotel. Northfield was starting to look like a town. North wanted to bring a railroad to his town as well. He invested in the Minneapolis and Cedar Valley Railroad and was elected to its board of directors. But he had overextended himself. By 1859, he was facing bankruptcy. He was forced to sell his mills, the hotel, the unsold town lots, and all of his land in Northfield. Charles Wheaton, a fellow New Yorker, purchased North's flour and sawmills. Six years later, in 1865, he sold the flour mill at the edge of Bridge Square to Captain Jesse Ames, a newcomer to Northfield. Ames was a sailing ship captain from Maine and Cape Cod, who had sailed the world for 30 years. He made his last voyage in 1861, taking a ship from New Zealand to London, where he sold it and returned to the United States. The captain had a son in Minnesota, and he came to visit and stayed to farm outside Northfield before moving into town to retire. He purchased the flour mill with his two sons, John and Adelbert, saying, It will be a worthwhile investment. Indeed, the Ames family would own and operate one or more mills in Northfield for the next 50 years, becoming prominent citizens. Jesse Ames was one of the founders of the First National Bank and served as its vice president. The railroad finally reached Northfield in 1865. That made it easier for surrounding communities to ship wheat to Northfield for processing and for flour to be shipped to market. The good oak in the woods surrounding Northfield was converted to flour barrels. The small flour mill could not keep up with the demand for its flour, so in 1869 Ames built a new and larger one on the west side of the river and closer to the railroad tracks. This is the Ames Mill you see today. The Ames Mill was one of the first mills in Minnesota to produce what was called new process flour. It used techniques likely developed in Northfield and at the Archibald Mill in Dundas, three miles upriver from here, that produced highly prized, clean, white flour. 
It did so by essentially removing the bran, the outer hull of the wheat grain, and the wheat germ. The result was impressive. When Ames flour was exhibited at the Philadelphia Centennial Exhibition during the summer of 1876, it was judged the best straight flour in the world. The millers in Minneapolis quickly appropriated these new techniques. Using the abundant water power of the St. Anthony Falls on the Mississippi River, Minneapolis quickly became a major flour milling center. Among those who profited from the mill's success was Ames' son, Adalbert. A Union general during the Civil War, he served in the late 1860s and early 1870s as governor and a senator for the state of Mississippi. He did not live in Northfield. He only visited occasionally to check on his investment. On one such trip, his wife, writing to her mother, said, We have a large piece of honey and delicious bran muffins from fresh meal ground at the mill every night. Adelbert Ames was in town on September 7, 1876, the day that Jesse James, Cole Younger, and their gang came to town. Their plans failed. As the robbery started, J.S. Allen, a shop owner, called out, Get your guns, boys! They're robbing the bank! As the gunfight started, it is reported that Adelbert came running across Bridge Square from the mill and joined the fray. Two of the robbers, the bank cashier and one Northfield citizen, were killed. The gang, some wounded, rode out of town. Posses captured or killed most of the gang within a week. Jesse and his brother escaped, but the James Younger gang was no more. And with it, another piece of frontier life ended. The Ames continually increased the capacity of their mill. In 1873, they added a 30,000 bushel elevator to store wheat. In 1879, they installed a steam engine to drive the machinery, because in the fall the water in the Cannon River was insufficient to drive their grinding stones. In 1880, the Ames Mill was shipping 400 barrels of flour a day by railroad. Captain Ames died in 1895. Adelbert sold a smaller mill on Bridge Square to the city in 1911, enabling it to start the improvement of the square. The larger mill, the Ames Mill on the west side of the river, was sold several times between 1917 and 1925, when the Campbell Cereal Company took it over. In 1919, after John Campbell came back from World War I, he began experimenting with hot cereals made of wheat. His goal was to create a better-tasting cereal than farina or cream of wheat that also cooked faster. A friend suggested that he flavor his cereal with malt, and Malta meal was born. Production of Malta meal moved to the Ames Mill in 1927 when the Campbell Mill in Owatonna burned. In 1961, chocolate Malta meal was introduced. Later, the company added discount bagged cold cereals, which are manufactured in plants in Northfield, Tremonton, Utah, and Ashborough, North Carolina. The company is now the fifth largest cereal manufacturer in the United States, marketing its cereals in more than 70% of the nation's grocery stores. As the photographs you've been watching show, the mill looks very much as it did when it was constructed in 1869. It is the oldest industrial building in Northfield and very utilitarian in design. The steam engine was removed when the machinery in the plant was converted to electricity sometime after the turn of the century. The small fifth story was removed when the concrete elevator building was added. In recent years, the Malta Mill Company has taken great pride in returning the mill to its historic appearance. They also maintain it as a state-of-the-art cereal packaging facility that consistently earns the highest marks from its inspectors. The Ames Mill continues to make Malta Mill to this day. The company is the second largest employer in town, 
employing just over 860 people, just behind St. Olaf College and just ahead of Carleton College.